Hi again and welcome back to statistics. Today we're in section 4.3 talking about the coefficient of determination. So I'm just going to show you how to calculate that on the calculator and tell you basically what it means for a linear model. Okay, the coefficient of determination is denoted by R squared and it measures the proportion of the total change in the response variable that can be explained by the least squares regression line. Now I know that all sounds very technical and hard to deal with, but it's really not. Just hang with me for just a minute. So let me tell you a little bit about R squared. First of all, R squared is the coefficient of determination and it is a number between 0 and 1 inclusive. In other words, 0 has to be less than or equal to R squared, which has to be less than or equal to 1. If R squared is 0, then the regression equation has no ability to predict the Y value with any accuracy at all. However, if R squared equals 1, then the regression equation explains 100% of the change in the response variable. In other words, if R squared is 1, then the regression equation does a perfect job of predicting the Y values. Now here we have the scatter diagram and the regression equation you see here for the data that we've been using since section 4.1. This is the driving distance versus club head speed that we have been working with all along. It says the predicted value of distance without considering club head speed is the average of all the observed Y values and that's represented by Y bar. In other words, if we didn't have any information about club head speed and we needed to make a prediction for the distance traveled by the ball on the next swing, then the best we could do to make a prediction would be to average all of the Y values we have and that's the line that you see here, this dark line right here, that's Y bar. And for this data set, Y bar is 266.75. However, the predicted value of distance taking club head speed into account, that is using the regression equation, is represented by Y hat. And that's what you see here, this regression equation that we've been working with. So if we didn't know anything about club head speed, the best prediction we could make would be Y bar. But since we do have some information about club head speed, then we can make a better prediction, and that is given by Y hat. Now for any data value, and let's just look at an X value of 103, for example. For any X value, the difference between Y bar and the actual observed Y value is total deviation and you can see that the deviation is kind of separated into two parts. The difference between Y hat, which is the Y value predicted by the regression equation, and Y bar is explained by changes in club head speed. However, the difference between Y hat and the actual observed Y is unexplained deviation. So this deviation could have happened because there was a gust of wind at the moment that the golfer hit the ball, or it could have happened because the golfer wasn't lined up over the ball exactly right, or because their arm cramped at the last minute, or just anything that caused that swing to be different from the others. So the coefficient of determination is the number that tells us what percent of the total deviation is explained by changes in X, which was the club head speed. For linear models like the ones we're working with, coefficient of determination is the square of the linear correlation coefficient r. So we have now linear correlation coefficient r and coefficient of determination r squared. And r squared really is r times r. Now we're going to do an example together. So this says the following data represent commute times in minutes and scores on a well-being survey. Use the graphing calculator to calculate the coefficient of determination. We know that is R squared. And then we're going to interpret the coefficient of determination and comment on the adequacy of the linear model. So I've already taken my calculator and entered 
the commute times in list one, and the well-being scores in list two. And now what I'm going to do is click Stat, arrow over to Calc, and then option four, LinReg. And I have the new operating system here, so you just want to make sure that Frequency List and Store Reg EQ are blank because we really don't need to store the regression equation for this data, so there's no sense going through that. Otherwise, if you have the old operating system, you can just press Enter, assuming your data are in List 1 and List 2, and I will arrow down to Calculate and press Enter. And here you see that the calculator is not only giving us R, but also R squared, and it's given us all of this every time we've used this. It's just that we haven't always used all the numbers. So we could get from here the regression equation if we needed it. We also have the linear correlation coefficient. And now we see the coefficient of determination. So the coefficient of determination is 0.96138. Okay, so I've hidden the calculator now and R squared we said was 0 0.96138 and it says interpret the coefficient of determination and comment on the adequacy of the linear model. So we know that the coefficient of determination tells us what percent of the variation in Y can be explained by variations in X. So I'm just going to write that about 96.14% of the variations in the well-being score can be explained by variations in commute time. So I'm going to say that our linear regression equation would do a very good job of predicting well-being scores if we put in a commute time that's in the range of 5 to 105.